You guys have been touring all over the country, maybe not you as much, but Adrian, you've been showing your film all over the place with the Teenage Empowerment Tour. Tell us more about that, how, how it started from the film, how you, how you made it into this movement, if you will, and, and what the experience has been like. What have you been trying to accomplish? Uh, well, it really was born out of a, a, a need to serve the film uh, on a business level, on, a, on an independent filmmaking level, because, <laughs> you know, we're Not like, the answer you'd get from a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, you know... That's an honest answer, yeah, really yeah, yeah. honest answer. Right. Well, I'll flip it, don't worry. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Still. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we're a documentary. We're an independent documentary. Documentaries don't get the love that, that an avatar would get. Um, or a Hunger Games at that, which, you know, similar themes, yeah. but it doesn't go as deep. Uh, but, you know, it's a documentary, and for some reason, you know, we're told or we're, you know, we, we've told ourselves that we're not as you know, gun ho to go see a documentary. When, when someone says, oh, we're going to go see this documentary, how many of your friends, or how many of you thought, like, oh, God, a documentary, i got to go sit through that thing. Um, and that's sort of a general consensus. So we have to work not only uh, as independent filmmakers, but also as documentary filmmakers, a little bit harder to get our work seen. But again, about opportunity, we're in a time where we have an opportunity to actually take the reins. We're not beholden to the big studios to share our work. All we have to do is use our inventive inventiveness and technology to bring our message um, to the audiences that are that are there. They just have to be, you know, found really. So we, you know, I, I read an article um, by Stephen Beer, who was talking about the empowerment model of independent filmmaking. This was when my film was at Sundance. So first case, best case scenario, you sell the movie for a buttload of money and then they distribute it and it's hugely successful. Everybody goes to the movie. Then you go to DVD. Everybody does, everybody rents that. And then, you know, it starts to trickle down to VOD and, you know, other on online outlets. We got HBO, which was fantastic. They're, you know, highly respected. Um, but they have an HBO audience. The only, you know, the only people that really get to see it are people who subscribe to HBO. But I was like, well, you know, the people who really need to see this film are young people and people in college who aren't spending whatever it is on HBO. They're spending it on beer. <laughs> um, so, so you know, we we sort of figured out uh, sort of a, a hybrid, like a uh, new distribution model and education tour, which is basically the best of, I think, both worlds for the film because we have been, um, you know, benefiting or benefited from, like, you know, many different, many people who haven't seen the film. And I think it's been an exchange because I think they get something out of it as well. Why did you choose documentaries? I'm curious about that. I mean, we've talked a few times. You're Adrian Grenier. You know, you have the opportunity to get meetings with people that, that, everyone else in this room couldn't get to do maybe a larger film, a higher budget film, but you've chosen to work, do a few documentaries now. Why, what is it about the medium that's, that's drawn you in? My mom's been asking me that question for <laughs> a long time too. Um, well, I think it has to do with um, my disillusionment uh, of sort of media in general, because especially being an actor, being you know, a filmmaker, you know, I know how, I know the devices, I'm familiar with the devices of storytelling. And so I'm less, uh, I'm less in, uh, inspired or less impressed by conventional films. Um, they're just not real enough. Like, I, I get how they're made. And, and I think more and more we're all having the same f feelings because we all are now becoming uh, very in tune and very knowledgeable about how things are created. So we're not as impressed, which is partly why. And, and you'll, you'll, when you read Tom's book, you'll, you, you know, he talks all about this. Is, you know, so we, we crave something more real, something that can like, actually suspend our disbelief. And, and that's why reality shows are coming about. And that's why there's this 
onrush of uh, tabloid because we want to see we don't want to see the illusion created by the PR machine or by the actor who wants you to see them in the best light. We want to see the tablet. We want to see the guy in the gutter who's like undeniably, obviously messed up because, you know, it's why would he, why would he pose for that picture? Yeah. So we want the real, and I think, you know, documentaries did that for me. You know, they gave me something that I could act. That, that these are real people. This is something that actually is based in reality. Um, but then documentaries have a little bit more structure and a story and uh, often, you know, sort of may maybe more sophisticated ideas presented as opposed to reality, which I think, you know, tends to fall flat, personally. Now, do you find it, um, because there were a couple of times in the film where I felt like, it was, when you were talking to Austin's mom, you could have said the wrong thing, just one word with the wrong inflection, suddenly she would have been like, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. You're, do you find it tough to find, as a documentary filmmaker, the balance in telling your story but also being respectful to the subjects? Yeah. Well, it, it is in a lot of ways human politics. You know, you're dealing with real people and you, know, you want to be sensitive but you want to be honest and you want to tell the real story and, and you're negotiating with their own sense of themselves and how they're going to be and what they're going to be portrayed as but you want them to be natural and honest as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's partly from my experience as an actor. So, you know, I'm, and also I'm, I'm, in, I'm in them. So, like, <laughs> it's kind of like we're in this scene together. Yeah, that's of. a very important <laughs> thing about this movie. Yeah. It's not very unusual to have the person who's making it also expose themselves almost as much, and in a couple of cases, as just as much as anyone else in the movie. So, he put himself in the position of being shown not always in the best light um, himself in the movie. He's talking about you, the beard. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that's, I mean, think about it. I, 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 I'm not sure. I, I'm not enough of a <clears throat> film historian to know, but I don't think that's ever been done before that I can think of. And if that's true, that's huge. Cool. So, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I never put that spin on it before, but, but that's, you want to lead with that. That's yeah, really okay. good. Um, but I remember the scene where the mother, uh, you know, realizes that that um, that Austin is, you know, getting then getting into situations and somebody threatening threatening to beat him up, and she just gets you know concerned about it, and then finally Adrian ends up showing the movie to them, and that has all of that reflexivity where they see the movie, and then she begins to think, oh my God, I look like an idiot, but by that time she's not going, I want out. She's going, I want to fix this because yeah. she's so embedded in the movie. So I, I think he really, he really did uh, get them so involved in who they really are by showing them so candidly to themselves uh, that you know, it's not something they could pull out of. There, there's, there's, well, I, I really do have to give props to, to Austin's mom yeah. uh, because she either instinctively or consciously uh, you know, decided that this was going to be a good thing, and she recognized that. And it was through conversations we had, and she understood my intentions. Um, but she, she knew that there were certain things as a mother, and you know, there's a lot of arguments about whether or not she's too liberal or whatever. But I think on some level, she she knew as a mother, there's only so much she can impart on her son. Eventually, the the world is going to have an influence, and so for her to allow Austin to explore the world. But on some level, still, you know, control at least that influence. And she, I think, trusted that, you know, what we were doing was going to have maybe get, get him to like sort of think about what he was doing a little bit more. Um, and I think, she, you know, she trusted us, and I appreciate that. But you know, that that was also kind of a smart move because she wasn't, in fact, just letting him run up willy nilly. We were there, giving him perspective. You know, so. She did both.